so when AEW comes around and now there's this opportunity with um, what turns out to be this massive, amazing wrestling company, what was that opportunity like for you to, to get that ball rolling and like meeting Tony and figuring out what AEW was going to be and what your role ultimately is going to be uh, within AEW? Uh, wild. It was absolutely wild. I never in a million years thought anything like this would happen. Yeah. So during that period, I had kind of, I was, I was in a slump, you know, like grinding away on the indies, trying to make a name for yourself and reaching out to some of the bigger name promotions, either getting no sold, people mm -hmm. just leaving you on read or like, Ugh. we don't have anything. We don't have anything. We don't have anything. Yeah. And I'm like, you gotta have something like you're bringing in people who I know for a fact have only trained for three months. Mm -hmm. Like you gotta have something like, yeah. And we're going to talk about hard, some hard stuff. I elephant in the room. It's like, I don't know if this is a black thing, if this is a lady thing, if it's a trans thing, yeah. but it's definitely a thing sure. why you're not hiring me. And I would prefer a more direct, absolute answer instead of this runaround. Yeah. Because now I have to like come back and bug you again in a few weeks. Yeah. And this, I'm not going anywhere. Just, you know, <laughs> let's just do this. Give me some table scraps. Something, yeah. give me a dark match, something. Yeah. Let me prove my worth. Uh, Oh. How sorry, like how frustrating is that? Like trying like have like just to have to have those conversations. And were people ever honest with you about what they were looking for or what they what the issue was? Some people and and some people may not like this out there, but like I respect them more when they're like, hey, we can't use you. Like totally respect your, you know, your trans identity, but we don't know what to do with that. Okay. Like I can respect that direct answer, mm -hmm. you know, like, first of all, it's not filled with hate. Like you, you saying, Hey, I respect you for what you're doing. I just don't know what to do with that. Yeah. That's a very honest answer. You're looking me in my face. You're telling me that I can respect that. Mm -hmm. But when you're like giving me the runaround kind of shaking me off, yeah, that messes with your mind. Yeah. Cause then now I'm like, how is it I'm good enough to get the attention of a genuine wrestling legend from around the world. Mm -hmm. Someone in Japan sees something in me that they're willing to bring me to Japan. Yeah. They introduce me to their other friends who are legends, Mako Saitomura, who instantly yeah. throws me on her shows. Yeah. So how is it they see something in me, but for some reason you don't, something's yeah. not adding up. Yeah. So things like that mess with your mind and you just have such a low, self-worth at that mm -hmm. point so kind of to circle back by this point i had relegated myself maybe i'll step away from wrestling for a little bit and focus more on the acting mm -hmm. um i'm gonna do my last shot send out i i had formulated a whole uh plan of what i was gonna do my plan of attack excuse me of what i was gonna do while i was in J on my last tour in japan and i was like i'm gonna send out resumes uh you know eight by tens promos some matches. I'm going to send all this stuff out to these promotions. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. Um, I get back to the States and I'm like, all right, I'm ready to do this. You know, if this doesn't happen, I'll step away for a little bit, reinvent myself. Maybe I'll shake up the character. Like, I don't know, but something's got to give. And before I did any of that, I get a DM from Kenny Omega. Oh my gosh. Who I instantly thought was a lie. Yeah, right, right. You're like, is this a hacked account? What's happening here? Oh, a hundred percent. So like, I, I thought it was a joke. I thought it was a lie. And I'm like, yeah, right. What? Kitty Omega, my ass, whatever. And I go and I look and I'm like, oh, sorry, sir. Yes, um, we can. I would love to discuss some things with you. And like, so we exchange and we discuss. But it was it was such a uh, blessing from the universe at that point because I was so down on myself. And the universe was like, all right, you know, let's give her let's give her a bone. Let's yeah. give her something. So to be the first openly trans uh, wrestler signed to such a big promotion, do you feel that just the change that's happening or what change can still happen? I mean, whether it's in the LGBTQ plus storylines that are happening uh, in, in professional wrestling, how do you think that that should sort of change and evolve? Naturally. I think it should. I don't think anything should ever be forced mm -hmm. uh, because then it's just it seems fake and forced like people can see that. Yeah, um, there definitely is a change and a shift happening and it gets frustrating even for us, you know, for anyone out there, because we've kind of conditioned ourselves in this microwave society for instant gratification. Mm -hmm. So the second you put something out there on Instagram or Twitter, you get a like, yeah. you know, the second, you know, especially with the, with the high speed Internet and anything you, 
you want to look up some information, you get results right away. Yeah. So we're kind of conditioned for input, output instantly. Yeah. So things are happening. Things are changing. They may not change and shift quite as much as we hope because mm -hmm. some of these other systems are deep rooted in the culture of things. Mm -hmm. But you take a look now compared to literally three years ago, only three years ago, and there's so many more people who are feeling comfortable and being out and being open and being themselves. Yeah. Compare that to five years before that. Yeah. Compare that to 10 years before that. There is a shift happening. There is a change happening. Yeah. People's minds and hearts are becoming more and more open and accepting. It's happening, folks. We're doing the work. We're putting ourselves out there. And it all begins with us. Be the change you want to see in the world. You live authentically. Now there's that rep representation. Because I didn't have anybody like me growing yeah. up. Yeah. So now I have to be who I didn't have growing up so that somebody does have that. God, there's so much in that too of like being the first person to do something. And who were the people that you like? Who were your wrestlers that you loved? Uh, Undertaker had the yeah, shirt. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, there, there were there were a lot. Uh, I could list go on for yeah. years. Jericho, Undertaker, Rey Mysterio, Lita, Trish, mm -hmm. uh, Jazz, Jacqueline. Yeah. Um, China. Oh my God. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. there, there were just so many wonderful characters growing up that I saw that I just, something about them I gravitated towards. It's funny talking to just about like how that change does take time. I just saw like a stupid headline where like I was talking about the women's tag titles in WWE and I was like, yeah, they just like, they never really took on the importance that I think everyone wanted them to, to begin with. And people thought I was like talking shit, but it's like, no, I'm not. But like women's wrestling has come such a long way in like, when I think of like the eight years as with WWE from when I started to when I left, it's like, what a difference that that, that has happened in that. So like, of course, yeah, the, I mean, we're working towards making the tag titles feel important and to have these other divisions and whether it's having tag titles or you're having intergender wrestling, like there's all these things in their space for them, but it's not going to be that instant. Here we go. It is as important as the intercontinental right. title. It is as important as the AEW uh, world championship. So, I mean, yeah, those things do take time Absolutely. and it's not, yeah, you can't like kick it when it's down to be like, Oh, it's not, it's not the thing that we want it to be. It's like, it's got to get there. As, as much as we would love to just like introduce anything, you yeah. know, whatever it is, introduce it. And it just instantly be where we want it. That, that would be ideal. Like, I wish yeah, we could course. do that. I wish we could do that. But that's just not the way anything works. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Literally anything. Look at anything in life. The White House. The, when it was first built, it was just a building. Like, whatever. Yeah. But now it's like this important symbol of American heritage. Yeah. You know? So it takes time for things to build up that importance. Why do you think the fans are so attached to the women's roster in AEW? I think the fans really are gravitating towards uh, the women there. You guys have really been building up a lot of great talent and stars are being built within that company. But what's what's your take on that? Um, because I'm a part of it. No, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I think I think and this is just my own theory. I think a big part of that is kind of why so many people love AEW in general. Uh, we just we feel more authentic, more more grounded because a lot of us came from the Indies. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us were touring the country and you saw us on the smaller stages and you feel a little bit more invested. You feel like this is, you know, a cousin or a sister or, you know, you've seen them grow. Yeah, you've, you've been there. From you've like seen the these people grow literally you from to meet the get go them and buy their merch when they're selling them at the counters, like all those. Exactly. And you've had these one on one encounters with them at the at the Indies. And, and now they're elevated. So you, you feel like a part of you is yeah. up there with them. Yeah. And, and that's, that's just my personal take. But I think that's a big part to do with why people feel so invested in Yeah. Us. 